Hi, I'm Ralph Langner. In this video, I'm going to explain why OT security awareness raising is crap. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking this is absolutely counterintuitive and controversial, but allow me to make my argument. Here is how OT security awareness raising is supposed to work. You, as the OT security expert, tell all your coworkers about all the threats out there and how this could negatively affect the company, etc. And therefore, the, uh, how they should consider all those threats and the attack vectors and all the things that hackers could do, etc., etc., in their daily operations. So you try to give your coworkers some background, some context on hacker techniques, on risks, etc., on all the things that already uh, went wrong in other companies. You maybe tell them about Stuxnet, about uh, zero-day exploits, etc., etc. And then you assume that with this knowledge in the back of their head, that your coworkers, be those engineers or OT users such as operators, will make sure that in their operations that they stay away from these threats and that they perform their operations in a secure manner. In other words, what you're trying to do is to make them vigilant and also to educate them that they can exercise good judgment when they uh, consider various uh, uh, ways to do things like using a USB stick or not using an iPhone uh, at the workplace. So it's about vigilance and good judgment. And at the end of the day, you hope that they will do the right thing. So here is what you ultimately are trying to achieve. You want to modify your coworkers behavior by all the things that you have taught them, maybe also by scaring them. You want to make them do things differently and you are also increasing the workload of your coworkers. You're also trying to shift their attention to all those security threats, etc. Now think about that for a second. What does that mean for your coworker? Well, I tell you something. If I was your coworker, let's just say I was a, an ICS engineer, I could respond with something like this. I could say, let's just assume you're a Bob, the OT security expert. I could say, you know, Bob, you may not be aware of, of what I'm doing all day long, but the fact is that I need to focus 100% of my attention to the task at hand. So I get your point. You also want me to be vigilant in respect to that fuzzy cybersecurity stuff, but I just can't because it would mean that I have to take vigilance away from my primary job duties. Sorry, Bob. I can't do that and it would also be considered unsafe in what you're doing. And you would hear the same thing from an operator, etc. The second thing that I would tell you as your coworker would be, and you know, Bob, there is another thing. Well, uh, just between you and me, I might not be the smartest person, but I really don't understand all that cybersecurity good enough in order to exercise the judgment that you want me to exercise, like the situational awareness, etc., what to do at the right time and what not to do. It's just beyond my capabilities. But Bob, I can tell you one thing. If you would present me with some solid procedures that work for me, in my day-to-day -day operations that are aligned with all the use cases that I have to fulfill, I will certainly try my very best to make it happen. Seen. So um, maybe you have already encountered this conversation, but maybe your coworkers were just too polite to tell you the brutal truth. 
because the truth is that all of them have absolutely no desire to assume some additional tasks in respect to that fuzzy cybersecurity stuff. Uh, they have no desire to uh, pay attention to um, USB sticks, uh, to uh, applying security patches, when to do, when to apply a patch and when not to apply, and all the things that you have to uh, to check and uh, before you do that. So let me just tell you, it's a hard sell. The next thing. Reason number two, uh, why this is why this doesn't play out very well in the real world with the OT security awareness raising, is that many companies, many managers, think that if they do the uh, security awareness raising stuff, then they are good, then they are done. So here is what happens all the time, and you may also have encountered that already. Companies send um, engineers, ICS engineers, maintenance staff, plan planners to trainings and to conferences about OT security. And here is the funny thing. When I did those trainings, and, and I have done a lot of trainings for my customers, uh, I was always considering, okay, now they go to this training and when they go back home into their factories, then they, they, they are going to execute all the stuff that they have learned and they're addressing the problems that will implement a cybersecurity program and so on and so on. And guess what? Usually in more than 90% of the cases, this just didn't happen because management was under the misconception that they were doing something. They are addressing the problem. They raised all the awareness. And so um, now the, uh, the employees are capable of addressing the risk. And that is total nonsense. Now, the third reason why this doesn't work in reality and, and please check um, uh, that in, in respect to your own environment is that you cannot verify the results of OT security awareness raising efforts un unless you um, implement and define some very solid metrics and this is usually what most asset owners don't do. So here's the thing. If all you do is raising awareness and you never follow through in defining some good ways to measure the, the results of execution, you don't measure um, the, all the progress that you may or may not have made, then what you're ending up with is, now uh, we have a technical term for this in OT security, it's cybersecurity theater. And uh, why is this bad? Because you don't get your money's worth. And you're, and maybe that's even worse, you're not just fooling others, you're fooling yourself because you think that now you're aware of all the issues and your coworkers are aware of all the issues, so they act accordingly. And this doesn't happen until you verify, only if you have verified then you could uh, determine if uh, they actually follow through or not. And this brings me back to one of the uh, most important uh, concepts of lean OT security, which is execution and verification. So unless you verify, you might just be doing cybersecurity theater and it might not be worth doing. And this is what we experience with OT security awareness raising efforts all the time. And you shouldn't make that very same mistake. If you look at OT security awareness raising from, let's just say, one mile away, you, you can see the structure of the communication. So the basic idea is that the expert might even be an, uh, a hired expert, an outsourced expert. They tell everybody what they should consider in their day-to-day -day duties, etc. And then just by magic, 
everybody follows through and does all the good things that the expert tells them to do. And that is um, a little bit of a misconception. It, it, it's totally naive to assume that this would work. And only because of one simple truth. Most of those experts, the vast majority of the OT security experts, have no idea of the average day-to-day -day use cases of all the co-workers. They have no idea of what's going on on the plant floor. They have no idea of the daily tasks of an ICS engineer, of a maintenance guy, of an operator. So how in the world should this OT security be expert be able to educate this, let's just say, operator in a way that would work in reality, in real life. That's just not possible because the OT security experts in the majority, they lack the real world knowledge. So if you want to address awareness raising, here is what you should do. It should go both ways. And the first thing that you should do is make your OT security guys and gals aware of the use cases and the personalities and the corporate culture of the men and women with the boots on the ground. Because if you do that, you could tell right away that certain procedures that you have in mind will not work in that given environment. You could predict that the majority of your users will find all kinds of creative ways how to circumvent all those measures that, that you have uh, in mind, because otherwise it would just be too cumbersome for them. And if you are a seasoned OT security guy, you will have heard it many, many times, just like myself. Hey, you know what, if I really follow through with, with what you're telling us, we could no longer produce automotive parts, um, chemical products, electricity, you name it. So most likely if you're long enough in that space, you have heard that, that argument a couple of times. And, and here's the thing, if you discuss it with the people in charge, Many times you will, you will identify, well, actually, they got a point there. So let, let me just give you one simple example. If you make it super difficult for, um, the, uh, for, let's just say, the ICS engineers to exchange files with third parties, such as contractors, they will find clever ways to, uh, to make it happen anyway. So they will just find some shortcuts because exchanging files with, co uh, with, with contractors is a legitimate use case. And all the hurdles that you throw in into that use case, um, they're not going to work. So the first thing is uh, your coworkers will find creative workarounds. And the second thing is they will hate you even more. And that is not a good thing and it's absolutely unnecessary. So it's your duty as the OT security expert and as the one responsible to come up with procedures that actually work without introducing a lot of pain. So what we want to do in Lean OT security is we want to reduce waste for the user, waste for the ICS engineer, for the operator, etc. And in order to make that happen, you first need to understand the use cases, the mentality, the personality. So you should start with raising awareness for yourself. How do these guys and gals actually work? What are their use cases? And if you have a thorough understanding of those use cases, then you can start defining procedures. And when you're doing that, you'll, you'll also do that in tight correspondence, in tight communication with the various stakeholders. So let's not throw out uh, uh, the baby with the bathwater. Let's not throw out awareness raising uh, completely. But remember, it has to go both ways. You first need to understand 
the operations, the procedures, the personalities before you can engage in a meaningful conversation with your co-workers and uh, try to apply what you have learned in respect to all the um, OT security procedures that could make a difference. So remember one thing, they will never make a difference if they are simply um, not followed through by your by your stakeholders, if if the stakeholders are going to circumvent your procedures and and also to make all uh, to make it even worse, think that you're just a mm, I don't I, I don't want to use the word, but they, they just won't like you and you shouldn't fall into that trap. If you like this video, please check out the other stuff that we are doing at langner.com. Also, feel free to use the comments below the video. Please share what you think about this video, of, of about the various topics that I have addressed. And also hit the subscribe button to subscribe to our channel.